Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the All Atlantic Talks podcast, um, episode number six, All Atlantic Ocean Capacity Development and Training Platform. I remember you that this initiative is supported by the European Commission with the Anchor CSA and would present a showcase of interviews together with representatives and experts of the All Atlantic community addressing key priorities and challenges of the Alliance. My name is Carlo Cauti, I'm a journalist and I have the pleasure and the honor to present this episode number six. So our guest on this episode will be Dr. Werner Eckau, director at the International Ocean Institute at the Leibniz Center for Tropical Marine Research in Germany. Welcome, doctor. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you very much for your participation today with us. And also we have with us Dr. José Mulbert, professor in biological oceanography at the Institute of Oceanography, Federal University of Rio Grande here in Brazil. Welcome, doctor. Yes, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure for us to have you here with us today. And also we have Dr. Luis Pinheiro, professor in marine geology and geophysics at the University of Aveiro in Portugal and chair of the Portuguese committee at the IOC UNESCO. Welcome, doctor. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we have also Dr. Johan Agosten, the Secretary at the South Africa Deep Sea Trolling Industry Association in South Africa. Welcome, doctor. It's a pleasure. Good day, everybody. Looking forward to being able to chat to you about our program. Thank you. Thank you very much, doctor. So let's start our podcast. Remember the objective of our podcast for the people who are listening to us on your streaming platform. The aim of this podcast is discussing the All Atlantic Ocean Capacity Development and Training Platform. So let's start with the first question to Dr. Werner Eckau. Doctor, which are the objectives of the All Atlantic Ocean Capacity Development and Training Platform? and which are benefits for the whole Atlantic community. Doctor, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. And uh, well, this uh, anchor project is an initiative of the European Commission to really bring together marine scientists, marine research from all countries around the Atlantic Ocean. And one part of that is that uh, and very, very important part was uh, identified the capacity development or the, the capacity to undertake uh, marine research is uh, very different in the different parts of the Atlantic uh, Ocean. And so capacity development is one of the major baselines that have to be implemented and that have to be done to really serve and to realize research that contributes to the yeah, better and sustainable management of our oceans and to understand what is going on there. So the uh, commission has seen, and that is what we also yeah, tried to lay down in our objectives in the work package, the uh, commission is interested to, uh, to spend the money that is going into marine research as uh, efficient as possible. And that means that also in the capacity development uh, activities, we have to coordinate, we have to exchange information much better than we have done before, that we cooperate between different programs, between different projects, use the facilities that we have, use the activities that we have in a better way, in a joint way, and open up, uh, and this is also a very important part of this work package, give the possibilities to people all around the, the Atlantic Ocean uh, by opening up activities that already exist. And this includes ship times, and you, we will hear about floating universities, also courses, summer schools on different aspects uh, going even to or going to technical training of instruments which we will also hear or you will also hear about that uh, later so uh, all 
areas of uh, capacity development have to be coordinated in a in a good way to streamline and to better use the projects and the activities that are there we have already quite a lot of activities from uh, all countries but uh, in many cases this is very isolated and uh, I think it's a very good idea of the Commission to really to bring the all these activities together uh, from different programs and uh, and projects. Thank you very much, Doctor. So I would like to focus now on some key activities which are foreseen in the context of the capacity development and training platform. And I would like to ask my next question to Dr. Jose Mulbert. Doctor, which are the features and ambitions of the academic network, which is being enhanced in this framework? Doctor, please. Thank you for putting this question. As we are all aware, the all Atlantic countries have academic programs that study, monitor, and understand the ocean. The degree and quality of these different programs varies according to national capabilities, specific research group. So this addresses the inequality in the results that can be achieved individually by each research group and country. Some capabilities are local or regional, but few are international. And the degree of understanding of the problems and capabilities to benefit society is not equivalent in the region. We have to also realize that some of the issues and themes that are proposed by the Belen statement require an Atlantic view. So with this academic network, we would like to promote the organization of uh, the existing national and regional universities and research institutions in the Atlantic countries to consolidate in an integrated and interdisciplinary manner a new generation of scientists to address innovative research challenges with an all authentic perspective. So how do we accomplish that? Well, first of all, I think we have to align, align the existing Atlantic uh, national and international institutions in an area of the blue economy and marine sustainability science with a focus on key common areas of interest that are uh, that were identified in the Belen statement and bring this to a higher level of uh, cooperation and coordination. This will necessarily promote synergies among the different institutions, best practices, and uh, will bring a benefit to all the existing expertise and infrastructure. Another way of doing that is to promote across uh, and north-south Atlantic mobility for postgraduate students, early career scientists, youth ambassadors within a multidisciplinary environment, bringing in a holistic approach and taking into account the regional gender and balance for that uh, reason. It would also be important to create innovative and targeted approaches in capacity development to leave some of the, the you know, the common strategies we use for education. We, we are in a time now of innovation and technology. So we have to, to bring that into our lines of study uh, in order to approach uh, relevant ocean research and uh, technology innovation issues. With that, we can manage and sustainably use the ocean and coastal resources when we can contribute to solving different conflicts of interest and promote opportunities for science policy uh, dialogue at sea. So we envisioned that this in the long term, uh, this academic network will combine the academic and research infrastructure with the, within the all Atlantic institutions to foster graduate programs in marine science. And this will promote synergies between the different programs for sharing an existing infrastructure in the context of multilateral cooperation in training on marine science and technology. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Milbert. Next question also to Dr. Luis Pinheiro. Doctor, this time I would like to talk about the features and objectives for the All Atlantic Floating University Initiative. What we can talk about that? What you can say about that? 
Thank you so much. So this idea of creating an all-Atlantic floating university network builds on the fact that besides having a conventional training and education for early career ocean professionals, it is fundamental that they have an hands-on and a training at sea experience. And there are already a large number of opportunities and programs to do training at sea that operate all around the Atlantic in the different countries. And these programs, they are somehow disconnected. They have different targets. They are highly complementary because they address different needs and requirements, not only from academia, but also from industry. And therefore, being able to align all these programs, cooperate between them, share best experiences, that will be the way to foster this uh, training at sea. And particularly, of course, we are aiming at uh, less developed countries for which uh, these opportunities are absolutely essential. So what we want to do is to strengthen and develop training at sea in the Atlantic region, exchange students and uh, technicians between the different programs that are already operating. And so we will create this, uh, what we will call at sea network, which will be the All-Atlantic Floating University Network, that will bring together all these programs that already exist. It will also encourage countries which don't have training programs like this to develop their own programs. And then we will also seek on how, uh, through these programs, which of course are aligned with the Galway and Balain statements, because we have people from the North Atlantic uh, down to the South Atlantic, and Brazil has a large importance in this program. We have a large training program from Brazil, which will be involved, as well as South Africa. Pogo is also involved, Eurofleets, and so on. So we are hoping that with this uh, floating university, which is open-ended, this means that at any time, anyone can join and um, become a member of this initiative. And so we want to promote this training at sea. And we think this will be absolutely essential. We hope that we will bring a higher degree of cooperation between the different entities that promote training in the university. We are also looking at possibilities of sharing some of the training that is being done at sea onshore. Uh, through uh, sometimes some video communication and so on. And we wish uh, through this program to jointly address capacity development gaps in the different programs and so that we can address them. And some of them are the objectives of the decade, the UN decade of ocean science for sustainable development, of course, but there are also critical needs in some places. And one of the issues that many times has not been addressed is questions of more societal nature, also addressing policy issues. And so, for instance, questions relating to fisheries, to all kinds of uh, problems, social problems associated with uh, marine issues, they should be dealt with in these programs. So this is where we wish to cooperate all together and bring these already uh, highly successful initiatives that uh, exist around the Atlantic to a common ground and so that we can progress all together. Thank you very much. Question also for Dr. Dr. Johan Agostin, talking about the ambitions of the technical training activities planned in this context. Please, doctor, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. When we had the first meeting of Encore two years ago in Brussels, there was a lot of em emphasis on the importance of technical support for oceanography research in the Atlantic. Many of the countries felt that there was a shortage of technicians and that uh, they needed more exposure uh, to real life experiences in terms of research cruises and so on. Scientists write research papers, but what is it based on? Technicians often collect the data on which those publications are based and they prepare it for academic scientists. And sometimes they even analyze it. So this is the focus of this particular part of the program. And one thing we've planned is to have a first technical training crews on board of the research flagship of South Africa, the SA Gullis II. This is a, a polar supply and research ship, and we are planning a research and training survey from the 27th of June until the 8th of July. The research focus is also a series of stations across the Agulhas current, and this is known as the AXA line, and the research line will be used to expose the 20 trainees that we intend to take on board to a range of aspects of oceanographic training on board. And you know, bearing in mind, this is a world-class open ocean research vessel. I think it would be a very good experience for 
many of those technicians. So what the other aspect is that many of these technicians would be able to attend the lectures, the academic lectures on board, and also get some exposure to the theoretical basis of the science. And we hope that this would be the first of many cruises. So what sort of activities do we plan to have on board? Um, there would be a couple of days of getting to know the ship and preparing for the cruise. And then there would be several days of actual work where the technicians would be exposed to a number of activities such as underway sampling, in other words, deploying of XPTs, taking weather measurements, deploying current uh, measurements, instrumentation, deploying various oceanographic floats that collect data at sea, taking water samples for chemical studies and uh, looking at temperature profiles and, and uh, salinity and, and depth. And then also utilizing some plankton net samples, such as bongo nets and multi-sampler nets, process those, taking weather measurements, and even looking at bird and mammal observations and how those uh, are best collected. So we're looking at a range of activities before the vessel arrives back in port and we'll be able to give those technicians the kind of exposure that they need to improve their experience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, doctor. So. Uh, unfortunately, our time is over, but I would like to thank you very much, all our guests, for the participation to this episode number six of the All Atlantic Talks podcast, talking about the ocean capacity development and training platform in the All Atlantic. So, thank you very much to Dr. Werner Ekau, Director at the International Ocean Institute at the Leibniz Center for Tropical Marine Research in Germany. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your participation today with us. Yeah, I have to thank also that uh, we have the possibility to present the project here, Anchor, because I think it's really a very big step forward for the research community in the Atlantic Ocean. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much, uh, doctor. So thank you also to Dr. Jose Mulbert, professor in biological oceanography at the Institute of Oceanography at Federal University of Rio Grande here in Brazil. Thank you very much, doctor. Well, thank you. Carlo, it was a pleasure to be here and bring forward some information about this very huge enterprise to bring together all the academic institutions around the all Atlantic countries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, thank you to Dr. Luis Pinheiro, Professor in Marine Geology and Geophysics at the University of Aveiro in Portugal and Chair of the Portuguese Committee for the IUC UNESCO. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you very much, Carlo, for this opportunity. It was a pleasure to be with you and to be able to share some of the ideas concerning this creation of this floating university network, All Atlantic, which will bring up a whole young generation to a new step in training at sea. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And thank you also to Dr. Johan Augustin, Secretary of the South Africa Deep Sea Trolling Industry Association in South Africa. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much and thanks for the chance to tell you about this exciting initiative and its various components. We hope that that will excite other people out there too. Thank you. This is, will be the results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, it was a pleasure, Dr. Augustin. And thank you also to our public that are listening to us on the uh, streaming platform in your iOS or Android cell phone and also on YouTube. You can find all the episodes of the All Atlantic Talk podcast on your platform. You can find us also on YouTube, just putting there All Atlantic Talk podcast and you can listen to all the podcasts. So thank you very much once again for listening and see you soon in the next podcast. Goodbye.